what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of RX Bar. Uh, they end up selling to Kellogg for $600 million, so check out the interview I did with Peter. Um, P90X founder Tony Horton talks about how he made, his impressive part, Jason, is hearing the backstory. Like, it's not always they just arrive and they make hundreds of millions of dollars. He started off as a street mime, and he would make his food and rent money by putting a Hat on the street and doing street miming, performing. He's a street uh. performer. Baby Einstein founder, um, they grew from in like less than five years from zero to $20 million. They ended up selling to Disney later on. But the most impressive part was she calls herself the cancer assassin. She actually beat cancer twice um, you know, through her career, and that was amazing. And then uh. Uh, Atari founder Loan Bushnell talked about you know he was steve jobs's mentor he talks about steve offered him 33 percent of apple for fifty thousand dollars and why he said no so check wow. those episodes out um this episode is brought to you by rise 25 which i co-founded with my business partner john corcoran our mission at rise 25 is to connect you with your best referral partners and customers and we do that uh, for for people through a done for you podcast solution, which in my mind is the best thing I've done for my business and my life. So we help your company completely run and launch your own podcast. We distribute it across all different channels. You know, from your blog, you know, from your website to you know iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all of them. You simply you show up, you talk. We do everything else. Our team has been working with podcasters since 2009. I personally credit podcasting as the single best thing I've done. Um, it's allowed me to connect with founders of P90X, Atari, like I mentioned, Mattel, RX Bars. The list goes on and on. I even met my business partner through podcasting. And the inspiration is actually behind Inspired Insider is actually the interview that the Holocaust Foundation did with my grandfather who escaped from Nazi Germany. Him and his brother were the only people to survive. And it's published on my about page, but that's really the true inspiration. It's not just business related. It's helping you leave a legacy. It's helping your guests leave a legacy. So if you have questions, I think any business should start a podcast. Do it. If you have questions, just email us, support at rise25.com. We're happy to answer them. Um, I am excited to have today's guest, Jason Katzenbach, um, co-founder of amazing.com. I got a message from a friend, Dr. Charles Livingston, who's an amazing entrepreneur, giver, marketing genius. Uh, his site's drcharleslivingston.com, and he tells me, you need to have Jason on the podcast, and I already knew who Jason was, so I'm like, yes, that sounds great. I've been following <laughs> Jason and Matt uh, Clark, their trajectory since the beginning. I had Matt Clark on the podcast all the way back in 2013, um, and Jason you know, always knew he was going to be a leader, and I, I listened to this story that Jason told, and he marched into the break room at one of his jobs at age 23, and he, I, I would imagine, Jason, how I would react if I was one of your fellow employees, but he marched in and said, I'm going to be your boss in five years. If I liked you, I'd be like, cool, Jason, go for it. If I didn't, I'd be like, please don't. But he actually ended up doing that. <laughs> he ended up doing that in three years. He ended up quitting his job after realizing that being with the company was not as secure as he had thought. He went on to do $3.5 million the following year. He eventually met Matt Clark, and the rest was history. And Amazing.com has taught over 30,000 students and how to build a successful Amazon business. Uh, Amazing has their flagship course, Amazing Selling Machine. If you haven't checked it out, go to Amazing.com and check it out. They have Seller Pro, which is their monthly membership, and they have Amazing Accelerators. This is for existing sellers looking to scale their business. And yeah, because they've produced so many successful students, they're like, the students are probably like, Jason, uh, we need something for the accelerated track. Can you give us something? They, they created it. That's, um, that's and, pretty much right ex on. Exactly. Yeah. And their annual conference, SellerCon, not to be missed. My friend Rich Goldstein was like, this is one of the best conferences he's been to. And uh, you know they have past speakers like Richard Branson, Sarah Blakely, the founder of Spanx, and many more. And for Jason and for their team, it's not just about making money, but it's really about helping give people a freedom, a freedom over their life, a freedom over their family. And so if you haven't checked it out, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your family to check it out. And so, um, Jason, thank you for joining me. 
You're more than welcome. Thanks for having me here. You know, we all get into this business stuff for a lot of reasons. And um, I want to start with what matters and why we do what we do because it's a family. I know your family is very important to you. Um, I want you to talk about how being an entrepreneur has affected your parenting. Yeah. Um, well, you know, first of all, being a business owner, uh, there's so many parallels to family life, whether it be marriage or parenting, you know, like my business partner, Matt, our relationship is like a marriage in a lot of ways. hundred percent. Yeah. And our employees are like our children in a lot of ways, how you have to build them up, how you have to, you know, you're always wanting what's best for them. Um, the other thing that it's really helped me as a parent is, um, to, to constantly be, I have great conversations and my daughter, it was funny last, it would have been about a year and a half ago, we were in Florida and uh, there was an issue where she was actually breaking up with her boyfriend and I'm sitting there writing down on paper trying to coach her how the best way to do it and her friend just looks at it. she says, I wish I had a relationship like this with my parents. Um, and it's about, first of all, like I've always wanted to be a parent. I've always wanted to be a dad. So it's been a, a pleasure of mine, but it's like you, you have to engage with them. You know, if you have employees and you just hire them and never talk to them, have no relationship with them or whatever, they're not going to feel part of the family. They're not going to feel part of the business. They're not going to know the direction. They're going to be messed up when it comes to expectations. So it's a matter of communicating mm -hmm. and whether it's your family or employees, you've got to communicate. You've got to, you know, we actually have a uh, therapist that we pay for um, who every two weeks we have a guided conversation with our daughter. So my my eldest daughter passed away about a year and a half ago of so cancer. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Um, and is, of course, like, you, you know, the negative that comes from that, but the positive, too, because, again, it's like it makes you refocus on things kind of like in business. How, you know, when what's really go important. South, Exactly. All of a sudden you start looking at your budgeting and stuff because, you know, it just brings back what's important. So for my, you know, for when Kale passed away, it really made me realize like it's even that much more. I want to make sure that I'm in touch and really understanding how my daughter's doing. So we actually pay someone to guide a conversation with us where we talk about five main principles on the call, hmm. which all cover main points that we want to make sure in our lives we're communicating well and holding each other accountable. So we actually, you know, she's only 19, but we try to make these, as much as they're loving parenting conversations, we, we really want to make her a part of the family from the perspective of these are the decisions we're making. We're not just treating you like a child. We're actually wanting you to be part of these conversations. And it's really done well. And I mean, the same thing within business. When you bring in your employees and actually give them that feeling where they feel like I actually matter, I have a say, I, you know, things aren't just happening out of my control. It just builds trust, you know, and building trust is so important. So, I mean, that's the top thing that comes to my mind when you ask that question. Yeah. So Jason, on those calls, is it you, your wife and your daughter? Who's on the call? Yeah, the three of us plus the lady and Claire that we uh, work with. So she sits there, it's all video. Um, and she, so what we did was the first few calls, we created an outline. So we started with what's the purpose of doing these. Then we said, what are the five topics we came up with that we really wanted to know about? Mm. So we have a general check in. Then we get into things like health, finances, school, relationships, mm. um, and then just open. So we talk about each one of those so that. There's also no, you know, she's at school and one of the things, you know, like financially we're really good, but we don't want to spoil her. So with our daughter, we said, we'll pay for all your schooling and all your education and all your food, all your home, I mean. But when it comes to like miscellaneous spending, for example, it's like, no. You guys like, start the Amazon business. You, well, exactly. Or get a job, <laughs> like do something where, you know, because you, you need them to be building on themselves. But by having this relationship and having this conversation we're having, we really set the groundwork where we can talk about the reasons for doing it. Mm -hmm. And she can share like her opinions. And it just seems to uh, – it's really helping also transition from – you know, because when your kids grow, they come into an adult, they change, but they still look at you a lot of times in the same light. So it's us trying to help them kind of 
it, it's a, it, at the end goal. The purpose of it is to be able to create a stronger friendship and relationship mm-hmm. with my daughter. I mean, how that, did you that's decide to goal. first start to do that? Like, who, did someone <laughs> someone prompt you? Like, in every two weeks, <laughs> a san- sanity in marriage. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I I joke a little bit, but at the same time, I'm very serious. Where, um, you know, parenting's tough, man. And, you know, when you go through the loss of the child like we did with my eldest, you know, all of a sudden you realize you don't have a clue what you're doing. And you see all these other people and you hear that you're a good parent. And then you just feel like, oh, I screwed up here. Um, And so me and my wife were just kind of like banging our heads against the wall trying to figure out how can we help, you know, because there's little things like, you know, every teenage girl, what girl doesn't clean up her room? Like those kind of things. But it's like it seems like you ever see the movie Fifty First Dates? came out years ago, you know, mm-hmm, and it was, mm-hmm. it felt like that where every morning, like you were just starting <laughs> all over again. So we were like, what are we, you know, obviously we're doing something wrong. And we realized like as parents, it's like, yeah, we can lay down the law as, you know, as a parent and just say, this is how it is, but maybe we're wrong, you know? So we want, and because of going through the loss of the child, we needed some help anyway, because, you know, that just brings up a whole lot. You don't know what's normal, what what's not normal. So as we were working with her, we realized, well, why don't we ask if she would do this? And mm. she, she was all over. She said, I'd love to work with you guys on mm. that. Um, so it was kind of like a, you know, I don't want to say it was a latched last ditch effort because it wasn't at that point. But it was at a point where just accepting, you don't, you know, we didn't know what we didn't know. You know, like, and without that, I mean, we didn't know where to turn, how to make things better. Um, And we were all, you know, struggling so much emotionally. And it's just, it's just taken such a weight off. It's helped her transition. She's in university now. And Mm -hmm. the transition has been incredible. Um, You know, we were able to sit down because so many times you sit down with your your child and right away, like they're rolling their eyes like, oh, my God, like you don't know what you're talking about. You're a dumb adult, you know, but by having that framework that we did, it really set it up for success. Mm. Um, And I've been super, super happy. Yeah. So I have to ask about the five main principles, but we will give a shout out to. So Jillian, they should check out. She's she's an amazing, talented singer, um, songwriter. I listened to a few episodes, you know, a few episodes, few uh, songs today. <laughs> um, so you can go to JillianKatzenbach.com. Uh, that's you know, I have a Jillian. One of my daughters is Jillian. I have two daughters Sweet. also. Um, Jillian K A T Z E N B A C K dot com and check it out. Um, she'll be releasing some more albums, which we'll talk about. But the five main principles. Jason, this this is like we're not even gonna talk e commerce. This is like the real deal. But <laughs> I mean we will talk e commerce too, of course. Sure, but, sure, sure. But this is why people should do you know, get into um amazing dot com or e commerce so that you can have the freedom, you know what I mean? When for the good and the and the bad stuff. Um so the five main principles. Tell me a little bit about about that. Well, you know, at first we were kind of like, what do we talk about? What do we talk about? And then it was like, well, what are the main stressors we have? And so, you know, number one was, well, we just want to know how you are. Like, and so what we do is the start of the call, it's just a check in. It's like, so how are you today? How has your week been? And what have been some major issues, either good or bad, that have affected you this week? Mm-hmm. So what that does is it helps us just start the conversation with where everyone's at. Um, and it's been really helpful, too, because oftentimes, you know, as the father, I'm trying to put on this smile. And you know what it's like running a business. I mean, there's times where it's stressful. You know, you're sitting there in like sleepless nights um, just because of decisions you have to make, projects that are on the go. So being able to be open with them like that helps a lot, too. So they see where I'm coming from mm. so that they know if all of a sudden that week I might be a little bit more edgy. Well, this is why, you know, right, I have right. this kind of stuff. So that helps a lot. And then so we all go around, the three of us. We, we, we have uh, no interruptions. You talk until you're done talking. Then, in every meeting, we have someone else facilitated. So it will either be me, Charlene, mm. or my daughter, Jillian. So we'll rotate it around. So we, we create an official agenda. It and has the, the therapist purpose moderates. The, t- the therapist moderates. And the therapist moderates. Gotcha. And what's wonderful about that is, from and it's helped both from Jillian's side and from our side, it brings that normalcy. So, you know, just for example, I'll, I'll pick something really easy, like the messy bedroom. Like the therapist will just say, 
look, I've worked with a thousand teenagers, 99% of them have messy bedrooms, your daughter's normal, you know, and it's just like, all of a sudden, you're like, ah, but she'll do the same to my daughter will say, look, your parents are only doing this because they love you. Believe me, every parent does this. It's normal. And so it just helps because she's Her job is not to defend anybody. It's to make sure that we're looking at this with the most clear vision as possible. So Mm -hmm. it works really well. Mm -hmm. So then once we're done that, um, the next one we talk about is finance. So where you are financially. So she worked all summer because she knows that her whole life for college, she's got room, she's got food, she's got books, she's got all of the main necessities that she needs. But she also has this extracurricular stuff she wants to do, so she knows how much money has. So right now, we're our what we're working together with finance is to get her to get a job. So she's been applying to jobs, and she's had quite a few interviews so far. So we're helping and encourage you don't go her. <coughs> amazing, Deca. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You know, uh, her and her boyfriend have thought of starting it, and they really want to start um, the next release of our music ASM supplies program, or is, something. You know what I mean? Like do something. Uh, yeah. You know, one of the things I realized because with my oldest daughter, I felt the same way too. Just because you're an entrepreneur doesn't yeah. mean other people Good are point. entrepreneurs. Good you point. know, and it's. Good point. It's Point like, and taken. she's really persuaded, yeah. uh, really loving her music. But I'll tell you, I'd love it. Like, I would absolutely love it if they did it. Um, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so, so she's so, looking for a job. Yeah. 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 Um, I, you know, and, and with that too, um, you know, the whole thing with working for a job too is I do, you just really want her to have, at times you feel like we've been very blessed in life. Like, my career, my business has done very well. And so I've been able to bless my children very well. But at the same time, you don't want them to lose perspective of reality. And, you know, I'm not going to be there. You know, it's kind of like the handing off time in life now. Like you've got to start taking care of yourself. Um, I'll always be there as a parent, but I'm not going to pay your bills for the rest of your life kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so then we just talk about what are the other main things. So we mm-hmm. want to make sure that she's staying healthy. And we talk about physical health and also mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to know about her relationships. How is her relationship with her boyfriend? How is her relationship with her friends? So, Because we want to try to have everything as clear and upfront as possible. And we also make a statement that um, we're allowed to, if we ever have a conversation come up where someone's like, I don't want to talk about this right now, that's allowed to happen. But we also agree that we get to bring it up in 24 hours. Mm. So. You know, because there's times where, like, as a parent, I'm just anxiously got an itch that I got to scratch and I want this fixed now. And she's like, Dad, I don't want to talk about it right now. Like, can we talk about it later? And it's like, okay. Then you have 50 up. things. I'm, not, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So, uh, but overall, like, it, it, it really, um, in fact, we have one today, um, an hour after this uh, podcast is done, we're going to be having our Monday meeting. So, okay. yeah, we do it once a week. Very cool. No, thank you for sharing that. Um, and then, you know, the um, your favorite song from Jillian. So I, there's two of them that – so Telecaster is probably my favorite. Uh, but Green, it's a close tie. Telecaster just I, – I, I just think the production of it is really neat. Um, she writes all her own lyrics, uh, mm-hmm. all her own song. Like she, how this works is she, she's a guitar player, singer songwriter. So she writes the song and writes the music for it, and then she works with a production company that then add all this other instrumentation to it. And it's just such a neat process. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would have to say that I think right now, well, she's coming out with a new song called 956, which is a real te- tear jerker to us because it's all about the experience of going through the loss of her sister. And she passed away at 9.56, so mm. that's why they call it that. So that one's coming out, and I have to admit, that one I think is just so incredibly gorgeous. Mm. Um, that would be my favorite, but right okay. now with what's released, it's definitely... We'll have to uh, push that out and promote that when it goes live, so let us know, Sweet. and then... I will. Um, what have you learned from Gail? I'm so sorry to hear what had happened. Um, you know, her legacy, I'm sure, lives on. What have you learned from, from her? that you probably that that probably bleeds into oh, your business and your life and, and everything probably on a daily basis i imagine um you know one of the things is um love 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 it mm. is just you know life's too short and you can sit there and get so frustrated and angry at so many little things mm-hmm. 
that are just a waste of life, you know, like, mm. and, and, you know, I would have to admit that anyone I talk to that loses a child or loses a loved one, patient seems to be one of those things that they wish they had more of. Mm. Um, but the other thing that it's really helped, so my daughter, Jillian, for example, was really good at saving money. My daughter, Gail, the oldest one, if she had $10 in her pocket, it was burning a hole. You know, and, and we used to worry us. And then what happened is here, Gail had lived her life to the fullest, had so much fun. And when she passed away, if she would have socked all that money away, mm. the age of 21, like, what a waste. You know, and so I'm not telling people to, yeah. well, and my mom, when she passed away, she was only 49 years old. And so wow. I was 23 when that, yeah. And when she died, she didn't have very much money left to her. Now, I don't like, I'm not taking that routine. I'm not sitting here spending all my money. But I guess one of the things that it made me realize yeah. is, first of all, life's about living and enjoying. Yeah. Like if you're sitting there not enjoying life, like life's too hard, man. Like totally. there's constantly, like every day there's a stress or there's something potential. So it's first of all kind of trying to not be so serious about life all the time. But also the big thing for me, especially when she was going with cancer, that uh, with those years that you'd have weeks where it's just horrible. But all of a sudden you'd have a day that was just amazing where she was just like she wasn't sick anymore. Mm. And instead of sitting there saying like, oh, crap, she's going to be sick again tomorrow, it was just stopping and enjoying the right now. Mm. And so many times in life I think it's important to do that when – just stop for a second and think everyone's okay. Everyone's work, you know, everything's going well. We've got everything clear. Like just stop and enjoy it. And sometimes, you know, they say stop and smell the roses, but it really is just like that. Like sometimes it's so important to just step aside and not like they say the forest through the trees. And it's so true. Like you're, there's always going to be something to be stressed about, but sometimes you've got to force yourself to stop and think of something mm. to be, thankful about totally. so for me that totally. was a big totally thank you for sharing that um and you talked about living life um what do you do differently because of like you said you don't you don't like spend all your money you don't drain your bank account and go on all these lavish trips but but what have you done differently in the past you know year or so because you're like maybe you would have chosen a different decision before but now you're like that came in your mind you're like i need to just live life I'm back in Canada. So, uh -huh. uh, you know, and what I mean by that is, you know, I moved to Austin six years ago. We were mm -hmm. creating this business, going to travel the world, do that dot-com lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I realized, like, number one, man, family and friends, like your true family and friends, you know, it's, it's if you have that, protect that. Um, because one thing that was a big thing that I missed is when I was traveling mm -hmm. around. And so I have wonderful friends. Like I've met wonderful friends in Austin and all that kind of stuff. And so I guess I'm talking primarily family here. Like for me, it's, it really made me realize how much I missed my family and that traveling the world and living this sort of lifestyle, it was fun for a little bit, but it's like, no, I, I mean, I just, mm. I want to relax and just mm. be surrounded with people that just know me for me, trust me for me. Like I have a relationship with, I'm not always trying to, you know, it's just a different world. And I don't know how else to explain it from mm. that, perspective, but I'd say that was my biggest one. And also uh, minimalizing, uh, mm. you know, you know whether this is a midlife crisis thing or what. <laughs> You've gone the reverse of everyone, Jason. It's like, no, I didn't <laughs> went from like traveling and stuff to not traveling and getting rid of stuff. So. Yeah, we're this is we're actually going to spend the winter back in Canada this year instead of like making sure we're around palm trees and that stuff. That sounds we terrible just... to me, to be honest with you. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like don't get me wrong, like we're still going to travel. I'm not okay. going to be stuck here all winter. Like we love Arizona even. Okay. Um, just going somewhere a little warmer for a few weeks, but the idea is just like trying to not have so much chaos and movement. You know, like one of the things I find for running a company, you know, at first, you know, it's so great to say you can have have that lifestyle and some people love it where as long as you have a laptop and an internet connection you can work wherever you want from the world and, mm -hmm. and that's very true for me but what I find if I don't have a daily routine it's so hard to get into that routine mm. so if I'm traveling like that travel day I'm a terrible traveler I really am and I've just had to realize that for myself 
my travel days don't even look at work because it's just going to stress you out. It's going to overwhelm you. So what I do then is I just book my travel day. And so then what I need to do is know, okay, tomorrow, because I like to plan every day the night before. So this is what I'm doing tomorrow. So if all of a sudden, like, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to work from and there's all these events yeah. going on, it just it, it zaps me. It's not, not. And, you know, for those people that love that kind of stuff, that's good for you. But I found, like, definitely routine and a common workspace is dramatically more effective for me than just going mm. wherever. And mm. it's nice, yeah, some days, like, to get out of the house and go to a Starbucks or something just to have – People around you does help, but for the most part, I like to sit at my desk and just work all day at my desk, and then when I'm done, I'm done and walk away from it. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the park, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.